that itself is that you should never ever lose that north star because this is a north star that is what's going to make you successful in the future with anything you do riz is yeah. a part of our students and he runs you know what riz why don't you do the introduction because i know you guys have been changing quite a bit and you guys were one of like a very very popular pop-up store in your town yeah so uh, basically my name is reese seymour and Zeline Long. Zeline Long. And we together run uh, like a vegan hot dog store called Vossages. Well, it was a store. Now it's a pop-up called Vossages. Uh, first few years, we did festivals, markets, just kind of whatever we could, testing everything out, testing menus, recipes, and just building the business, really. Um, and then now where we are, we're at, obviously, with COVID and everything, um, we're doing pop-ups um, in restaurants and cafes. I say that plural. We've done one location so far um, and at the moment um, and what I was about to speak to Wilson about um, is basically the fact that we're you know talking with a few different places and yeah trying to you know find out where he's going to be a good place for us to eventually set up more of a permanent spot so yeah but um like I say, Wilson, back to the like what I was explaining. So the, the one of the locations we're talking to at the moment is a local shopping mall, and the the marketing manager of that location, she's basically saying, um, well, to backtrack a little bit more, that that specific place, um, it got bought out about four years ago by like a big, you know, multi-million pound corporation. Um, and they're wanting to heavily invest. It's one of these shopping malls where it's a bit, you know, dead. There's not really a lot not, going on. No, um, it, and it's, it's got the infrastructure, but it's, it's just empty, if that makes sense. Um, and what they want to do is obviously put a, a lot more money into it to, um, you know, bring people in. And um, one concept that's doing well, not necessarily in shopping centers, but just around the UK, I'm not sure, I'm presuming it's happening in the US as well, is like um, kind of like street food courtyards where there'll be like different traders that'll do like, you know, once or maybe just weekends, you know, pop-ups. Um, and essentially what, what they want to do is create something like that, but with more like ghost kitchen type setups, like a shell kitchen where they'd have, I don't know, let's say five to 10 traders, off the top of my head i don't know but um they'll have a set amount of traders and they'll cycle that and maybe have some resident traders um but i guess at the moment i haven't don't have a specific question for it but it's just preemptively i think you know obviously you've you've said to a couple of other guys when we get to that stage where it comes to like negotiation i do feel like it's going to be kind of like a little bit more boardroom as opposed to you know you know just having a, com a casual conversation i feel like it will get a little bit more serious so i mean yeah when it, when it gets to that stage it'd be brilliant kind of just to run 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 it all like all the details past yourself and like Get totally so. and i i would love to be able to help you out because when it comes to negotiation it is a very creative process and to give you guys and just kind of update you guys it's more on there is no right way of negotiation when it comes down to it a lot of people they make the mistake of thinking that things are very black and white it's like they get an offer and they build off that benchmark and they negotiate through that benchmark. And that is a, not the best way to go through any kind of negotiation um, because at the end of the day, when you're dealing with, let's say a landlord, and especially yeah. because the circumstances which you have explained is the fact that they don't have that much people and they're wanting to revitalize this whole area, um, they're gonna be definitely very willing to work out something very creative with you. And I'll share with you an example that I have. So a few years ago, I was offered, and part of my other business, I run carnival games and events. And part of that business, um, I was offered a location uh, at a very rural area. And within that rural area, they actually offered me five years free rent because we run pretty big events, right? So we have tens of thousands of people coming in through the doors every single night. So their in, in intent and also their basically the, the, what incentivizes them is the fact that me as an event organizer, I can go in, create traffic. And ultimately traffic is what would make that value of the land go up. So for him, it really is a no lose situation because if I don't go and revitalize that land, no one else would be, and they would need to spend 
hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars to do advertisement or to hire agencies to hire other people to do it. So for them, it becomes a win win situation where, hey, you know what, I'm going to give it to this guy. And he's going to do his stuff, make a ton of money while doing it. And he's going to put in all the work. And five years later, I'm going to jack up the price of the rent. And now I can charge premium rent because they have done the, all the work already. So they basically allow you to profit, profit, profit to a point where, you know what, you guys are doing well, put in the groundwork. And then I'm going to come in with, um, with a hammer kind of deal, right? So that is what typically what uh, some people would do in terms of uh, the structure of, of rent. There's no set price that you need to set. And when the time comes of negotiation, there's a lot of things that we can be creative with. Um, just like when you buy a business and just like when you sell a business, there are just so many different ways to approach the same problem. And I guess what I want you to take away from this is that when we're looking at a challenge or when we're looking at a question that we want to solve, we don't always necessarily need to be like very linear. We can go around that. Right. Um, so just wanted to preframe that uh, for you. So when you're thinking about it, um, you don't need to think that, hey, it can get intimidated by these big landlords. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, to be honest, like it's one of those things where I guess, I don't know, for me, I'm at a point where I kind of I see running this business, not in a immature way, but just in a, I don't know, a positive detachment like i see it as more of a game so we're going into it with that perspective it is fun and it's like i'm just excited to be honest because looking at what we could do with it and just thinking they've got this huge space the, the lady on the phone she's literally just given away she literally black and white said they've got a lot of money that they want to spend and it's just like okay if that's the case then you know we, we're both really really creative we've got a, a shitload of ideas so it's just like what can you know it, it gets a, it gets a bit silly because it's like oh what can we do like this unlimited you know magical budget you've got to be serious but at the same time it really is a case of like you know we could help to put something together that could genuinely revitalize this this place and create you know this bustling food court events area whatever it may be so yeah it's 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 an interesting one but we, we've got to wait and see on that and see what comes for sure but, for yeah. sure and i i think one thing to to keep uh, uh aware of and especially when you run any type of business and know for a fact that when you're thinking about and i think that's what that landlord is doing right they want the the young guns that has the time that has the fire the ambition to be able to do all the work for them and so then that way they don't need to invest in that um yeah. so something that you want to share with you is that it's definitely not as a um it's definitely a lot more work than building out let's say a a, a vegan uh hot dog shop or brand right because yeah. that itself is hard enough as is right i know i'm pretty sure you know about that um but now if you're talking about creating a food court and also revitalizing a mall that yeah. does it's another business all on its own right and it requires your attention and it requires your your thought and strategy all together so definitely when you are jumping into that definitely let me know and i'll love to give you more insights about hey how do we fine tune the demographic that we're trying to hit because when we're talking about malls it's all about foot traffic it's all about the demographic that we want to hit it's all about how you target them what brings them in is it going to be families is it going to be couples who is going to be coming through the doors for you guys actually you know what for some of the viewers that don't know i don't even think you've done you know, yourself any justice with sharing with us about your concept uh, so then that way it just gives people some perspective because i know you guys have hosted multiple different major events and you guys have done quite well for yourselves so, I mean, some of our big milestones is... Well, we um, did a festival that was 80,000 like, people yeah. there, and that was like a really busy one. Wow. Yeah, it was it's like, like a really popular it was event like in the UK. The type of festival where you got like Diplo and all that kind of headliners, just yeah, it was a like, pretty crazy. We were, like Migos. We were literally the, the food store that was closest to Migos. We just took down the side wall. We disclosure. Just, like, disclosure as well. Yeah, that, all those type of people. There was a lot of different But yeah. we did lot of, we did an we did another festival that we had one festival one week and then the next week we had another festival, so it was like back to back and I'll, I'll smash my fingers 
COVID didn't I? Yeah. That, was, that was the time where like we was putting up the like the whole stall and we was running on zero sleep, like literally no sleep. Yeah. And <laughs> basically like this hard piece of metal just went straight on my finger. It's like it two pieces and I'll just sandwiched a finger oh, like, like awful. literally burst a finger like crushed it, it was that's awful. not an accomplishment but no, that, that, was, that, that was, was... <laughs> this is a little story i guess <laughs> wow we've i feel like we've done it's it's crazy really when you think about it because we had this kind of romanticized idea of what running festivals would be like and doing it like physically in the flesh is just it's another story man it's it's a really rogue industry to be honest because yeah, it's like you're in a field security is you know few and far between and some of them are bloody doing whatever they want to do anyway and it's you know you've kind of got to watch your back you've got loads of cash on you but probably not in a post-covid world but before so you know we've kind of done all of that and then i mean in a week i think the staff as well is a Mm. big part because we had to like we was running like 15 members of staff yeah and like camping and like all doing that kind of stuff as well as running the stall and all like the logistics for the food and stuff i think that was that was the most challenging year we've also done like events um like mind body spirit which is again like that's just targeted at like women and they can be really demanding (laughs) (laughs) the middle income women like in the middle of London yeah, and I love that it came from you, right? Instead of uh Riz. It's like yo, it came <laughs> a woman can be very demanding <laughs> from another. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but honestly, genuinely at that event, it was like so like if you can imagine like your cliche posh London lady like just so so overly demanding and it was like we've never like if you get like you know yourself, you get sometimes you get a customer that's like I don't know, extra, um, like I say, demanding, but like you'll probably get one in a day or one in a, two in a week. But it was like five, six, seven, like every After couple of hours. Like, like, they were yeah. saying like we had like a really long queue because we was really busy. And there was like, you should have a sign telling people how long the wait is. And we was just like, we're not, not we're, not, we're not a theme park. We are actually like a food store and we're trying the best we can. Like there was five members of staff just turned like literally putting so many hot dogs out and there wasn't happy but there were yeah. some people who was really grateful i think an achievement is the fact that we've managed to travel around the whole of the uk pretty yeah. much it's really it. insane how how much you guys can accomplish at such a young age actually you know what mind sharing how old you guys are 23 and 24 but we started this when we was 20 20 yeah 20 and it was just literally from a dream that i had a physical and dream a physical dream it's insane like and every time i when i talk to you guys you guys are so passionate in what you guys do <laughs> and it really goes through the screen as much as i haven't seen you guys in person it's like you guys are so coachable and you guys are so good at what you guys do and now you guys are looking at a physical location yourself literally yeah. and like we just want to keep pushing because we know that we have got such we we don't want to just sell hot dogs like we want to create a community and we want to create like this atmosphere where people can come and really enjoy and we've got a, a really good idea what we want to put into place this year is like host a like a fundraising a fundraising event so we want to climb like one of the mountains in England like Ben Nevis and but we want to get vegans on that as well and like raise money for a cause that we think is like mm. something that needs money like either the uh, sea or or the rainforest and we want to get like vegans on get our get our fans to literally walk up the mountain with and us get to know like, us yeah. and like share like different ideas and it will just be like a whole community-based thing and because we don't want people just to think that we're selling hot dogs we really want people to understand us and get to know us as like not just friends but just i want to be like them not i like, they inspire me i want to create my own like business and i just feel like customers for for me personally is like a really big thing and i just i love being able to talk to people and what you just shared with me through that conversation guys i'm not sure if you guys know hold on to that re-watch this interview segment because this is gold and why this is gold, let me explain to you that every big brand, any brand out there that wants to start off, okay, they need to be able to have a brand story. They need to be able to have a, a conviction and their values 
that come out. And now once you create that vehicle, which is, let's say your business, other people, when they see that they'll come to you. And a lot of reasons why restaurants fails or brands or businesses fail is because usually that value of theirs and what they say they, they, they claim that they to be is not aligned for you. You just shared with me some, something so authentic to you, something that you hold truly to you. That itself is that you should never, ever lose that North star because this is a North star. That is what's going to make you successful in the future with anything you do, because people buy into people, people buy into brands, people buy into values that they can support when they come and buy your hot dogs, your, your, your vegan hot dogs. They're not buying just the vegan hot dogs. They're buying into your values, the community that you are creating. And this does not come easy. It's not something that comes naturally of, oh, I want to create this movement. No, it's not like that. A lot of people don't have that special dust to them. This is your special secret sauce. Don't ever <laughs> lose that. Okay. This is what branding is all about because branding is not just about your logo. Branding is about your values. Branding is about the community that you have nurtured branding is about what you believe in the causes that you guys want to support the way you guys do things. Those all act up and add into something called branding. And that's why it's something that people cannot copy. And yeah. for you continued on this path, doing that times 10, what you just told me and make sure your branding from your Instagram, your branding from your website, the conversations that you have and the stories that you tell revolves around back to the conversation that we just had, because that my friend is what is going to make you guys definitely trust me on that one. So anyone else that is watching this really find that message that you want to bring out to the world, being you, the authentic you, and the values that you want to bring forth, hold that so tight to you because it's okay to turn people off, but this is what and how you can actually attract loyal fans that follow you towards anywhere you go. So great job on that. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. <clears throat> I just think my business in general, like, I think one thing that we've learned is like, we do struggle like there is times where we have struggled and there's times where we feel like absolutely like we're doing really well and like I feel like that's one thing that I've had to cope with and had to deal with like a lot because I don't like it when we're low and it really gets to me but then I've got to feel like and I've got to know in myself like those times where we are really high and we, we're doing really well then I've got to embrace those, but I've got to take them both and really understand them. And I just think, have you got any advice for when you are like not doing so well? Or like what, what can you like, I don't know, do you just keep your focus on those good times and just keep trying your hardest? I don't know. Go back to this video and watch the segment that you just shared with me, your dreams, your vision and why you're doing it. Yeah. Right. Because you want to be able to bring that forward. And I can see your smile because you're like, oh, wow, this is really me. And you're proud of it. It's something that you wake up. You're proud of it. Every single time we have calls, you guys are both super happy, super passionate, super engaged. Yeah. That <laughs> is something that no one else can steal from you. Yes, we're going to have our highs. Yes, we're going to have our lows. But the North Star, and which is the reason why I'm like, you should always come back to this is because this is the North Star that will continue to lead you past anything moving forward. Yeah. Right? Definitely. Yeah. So, yeah, business could be crappy for a second. You know what? You might be arguing with Riz. It's okay. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> but when you come back that to this, happen. <laughs> right? That does happen. And it is completely fine. At the end of the day, when you look back at this, it's like this is what's going to make you make everything else worth it. Um, and that's the reason why I always share with people, as cliche as it is, to find your why. 
Mm-hmm. And why are you doing what you're doing anyways? Why? Why is that the case? If you're trying to make money, dude, there's so many different ways to make much more money out there. But why is that the case? <laughs> right? At the end of the day, why? Exactly. Because right. you're passionate about it because of the impact that you're able to make for me. Why am I coaching you guys? Why am I helping you guys out? Yo, I'm not getting paid for this. Yeah, I consult with other people $300 an hour. Why am I doing this? Why am I putting in double the effort? It is because I truly am passionate about impacting people, making changes in people's lives. Like the other day, I got an email from one of my subscribers. They emailed me and it was a woman from Ethiopia. And she was just thanking me and sending me pictures of the booth that they created in a hawker's market. And to a lot of people, it doesn't seem like much. It's like a really, really, uh, you can already imagine in a third party world, it's really nowhere close to what we, we have as, as a norm. Okay. Um, but the messaging about how, what we share and the impact that we're able to make actually changes not only her life, but her family's life. Exactly. Being able to provide for her family. Mm, definitely. Yeah. I, I feel like when we strolled up. Oh, sorry. Carry on. Yeah. I no, no, no. I'm I'm just sharing with you, and that's the reason why I've I've gained so much more passion towards what I'm doing because it's not just like YouTube. It's not just like subscribers. It's le- legit families and people that we're helping. And, and, and that's what really gives me even more motivation to continue to create good content, to be able to help people um, because it, it's really, really worth it at the end, right? It's something that you can't buy. Yeah. Like literally, like when we scroll, like when we found you on YouTube, it was like, we, this it's like a is, gold mine. Your YouTube he, channel. He was like amazing. YouTube. He was like, oh my God, like this person knows what he's talking about. Yeah. And like every work break, we was like watching you. And it just, even the secret sources, like I've really, really liked yeah. them because it's just, it's nice, like seeing the other side of like a restaurant and like getting to know like what helped them and what they went through and their secret sauce. Like it's, it's amazing, really. And like when we found, you were just like he's the guy he's yeah. the and, guy. We, and to be honest we've never ever like bought a like a web course like n- not not to the cost of of what yours is but like we just we just knew like okay you know we 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 already had it in our head that okay mm. this year we need to lay some solid foundations to be ready to you know take these next steps and then when we knew that that like when we you know jumped on whatever it was that the, the call prior and, and you went through the details of what actually was on the pro academy we were just like this is everything that you know we needed in like one kind of package and i think like for what you're doing like the value in that just that one little like web link like because that's all it is really like with all that amazing content it's just like i don't know it's just this body of work that obviously you're going to keep working on and keep growing and uh i don't know man i felt like just that it's just insane value that that can give to people like you say about that lady in ethiopia like everything on there if she was to like be able to apply all of it just bit by bit even if it takes her three four years like you know it can ch- completely t- change well, it's her life. already changed a lot exactly it? exactly so yeah it's crazy it's, it's brilliant but, yeah, thank so. you thank you actually you know what do you do you guys mind sharing what has it helped you guys with uh, like after taking the course like do you guys find any benefit in that Nice. Yeah. So first of all, we haven't finished the full course. We've still yeah. got a little bit left to finish and we, got, we want to finish like the bonus modules. Um, one thing, and this isn't something that we've gone over yet, but talking about the bonus modules that initially struck me as well was about uh, being able to sell a business because eventually that is something that we would like to do, you know, years t- time. Um, so that was something cool, but I haven't even watched that. But in terms of like what we have already gone over, I think having like a groundwork, like, like, you know, a a bullet pointed list of like, this is what you need to go through in terms of your why and, you know, understanding your brand and just to have that physically down on paper. I think that's, you know, one of the the real beneficial things because you can read like a thousand articles and each and everyone will say something different. And it's good to do that, like, you know, build your own. But I think like just having every 
to, to know, okay, if I do everything in this course, yeah, it might, it's not going to be a hundred percent of everything I need to do, obviously, but even if that's a good 50%, it's, or, or even just, even if it's just the foundations, it's to, to know that, okay, we're on the right track. And I'll be honest with you, Wilson, like a lot of the stuff that we went over in the course, we were already aware of, but it's just re-remembering and almost... It's making us go back over to yeah. like actually get a little bit more firm in our ideas. Like yeah. I think that was what was important because you start a business and it's never, when you're in the first stage of a business, like your ideas are going to change as you, as you move on and progress. Mm. So I think it was like good for us to go back oh did at the first stage to now because obviously everything had changed and I think it, it, I personally really like the finance part and the marketing part yeah. I think the finance part just made us realize okay these are the things that we need to be checking and these are the things that we should be looking at all the time and I felt like that was a really good part yeah. and the marketing because I think, if anything, what I'm trying to say is like, let's say, I don't know, there's a hundred things that you need to be doing to run a good, re- a successful restaurant. Um, and let's say we're only doing like 20 or 30 to be able to watch that and be like, this is at least 90 of the things. And then you're going to point out like, I don't know, 70 or whatever that you're not doing to be able to, you know, look at that list and be like, right, this is the shit that we're missing out. This is what we need to do. And just to be able to just tick those boxes almost and know, okay, you know, we're, we're at least on a bit more on the right track. Mm. So, yeah, it, awesome it's stuff. Just, yeah, Re- reassurance good. is probably one reassurance. Of yeah. yeah, definitely reassurance. Mm. Awesome. I'm that's the last thing I want is for people to not get value, and I'm, I'm glad you guys find it valuable. Uh, I'm glad that you guys are able to actually, actually do the stuff that I am showing you guys because at the end of the day, what makes a coach different and, and someone that is doing it is the fact that we can actually pinpoint what matters. Ultimately, let's say, for example, anyone that jumps in a swimming pool, they know how to swim or sorry, that's a bad example. Anyone that goes into the gym, they can pick up a dumbbell and they can do their curls. What is what, what distinguish, why are people paying hundreds of dollars for a personal trainer? It is because it's the minute items yeah. and the minute things to really pay attention to that makes all of the difference, right? Just yeah. like when, when we are building a business, we can actually, we already know everything. Like it's not rocket science. It's not like there's a secret sauce. However, there are the little minute things that we need to pay attention to, the items that are moving the needle. And when you focus on that, that's what's going to make all the difference for you guys. And for you guys, I know it's made a a really great impact in your business. So I'm really, really happy to be able to help you guys out on that note as well. Um, Any final remarks? Um, well, like the other day, so we was like looking through our social media, and there was someone who copied our blue sauce, and like this, <laughs> this other bloke place is quite big. They've got quite a large following. They're from London. And just to bear in but, mind, but this this burger, like that was donating it. I don't know if you've got it in your country. It's something called Drag Race, and it's like about people who dress in drag. And I think that some of the money for the burger was going to this charity. But I don't know, because these people know us and not, they've saw us before and they've done a festival with us and it's just like they've copied our blue sauce. And that's like our signature. And but, that's our signature. It, would, it wouldn't be so bad if like a hundred of the brands out there had done it. You look at hashtag blue sauce on Instagram, we're like pretty much the only one other than maybe someone's made a milkshake on their own account or whatever it is. But <laughs> brand wise, we're the, like, the only like, like sauce out there. As a garlic and herb mayo, they've done a garlic and herb mayo. It's like a blatant rip-off. And it, yeah, it's a bit of a... And I, we didn't know how to approach the situation. We thought, do we leave it? We did leave it in the end. But I think if they actually make it as a proper product on the menu, I, th- I feel like I don't know what I'm going to do. Yeah. Well, like- it comes back down to your branding, right? Because at the end of the day, no one can take that from you. Blue sauce, it's not proprietary to anyone. I can go out and make a blue sauce burger tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> And I can do exactly the same thing as what you guys are doing, but I will never, ever have that type of clientele and that relationship with my people. And the reason why is because it's just different values. It's just two different ways of doing things. So they can continue to copy you guys, but at the end of the day, you guys just need to stay in your lane. You guys need to be holding true to what you guys believe in. Who cares what other people are doing? 
Who cares, for example, for me, who cares if there's other people that that's teaching other people how to run a restaurant and they should be teaching people how to run their restaurant, but you guys won't buy into them because it's just two different values. You buy into me because of my values. What? Okay. So let me ask you a question. Why would you guys buy into me? What makes you feel that? Oh shit. Like I want to buy from this guy. Well, like you're quite relatable, and 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 that you've given that much value already on you, like on your page. That it's like, well, first of all, you're relatable, like as Liam said. So you like similar sort of age, like you know, you can kind of pick up someone's values even just from talking generally. But the value that you've already put out there, it's it's obvious that you like you know what you're talking about. You get you get a vibe, you know. What I mean, it's, it's the energy really, and you feel like okay, it, it ticks the boxes of he knows what the fuck he's talking about he's definitely you know somebody that you can you know, experience experience and you can you, you seem like an easygoing person who you can have a conversation with and you're not you know caught up in you know the way of running a restaurant 20 years ago or 30 years ago you're very up to date you know there are like we've watched videos with the guys before and sometimes it just seems like they're so caught up in old ways of doing things not like say willing to start on different apps or whatever it is and you know you've got to be open to you know doing those things but i think the the main sort of essence of it would be like you know i guess energy like i feel yeah. like we connect Beautiful. Even though it's through computer screen. <laughs> exactly. It's 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 very interesting. And the, the point that I'm trying to make is not like self-boasting or anything, but what I'm trying to make is if someone comes up with and, and by by and just to put uh, on the record, there are much more successful restaurant owners that are out there, much more knowledgeable than I am. I'm nowhere close to them. I'm sharing with you what I know. That's the only thing. Mm-hmm. But a lot bigger people that are out there, but you chose me because you relate to me because you think I'm trustworthy. You think I'm relevant and I'm relatable and I'm easygoing. These are the reasons why you choose to invest in me and have me as part of your coach in your corner, right? Mm -hmm. Same thing with you, you and your blue sauce. It's okay because there are a lot of sauces out there. What you (laughs) should really come back down to is who you are. What brings you to the market that other people cannot replace and people cannot copy? It's your passion. It's your values because you're going to keep innovating. You're not stopping at blue sauce. Yeah. Yeah. Blue sauce Mm -hmm. is something as a commodity. Commodity can be replaced and people can buy cheaper or they can buy any other brand. But if they want to buy into you guys, that is something that they cannot buy from anywhere else. Make sense? Yeah. 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 Hopefully this has been helpful. If people want to find you guys, follow your journey, support you guys, drop us your handle. Yeah, so it's at Vossages. So it's basically the word sausages, but with a V for <laughs> vegan at the beginning instead of the S. So it's V-A-U-S-A-G-E-S. At, on all handles and uk is the website. Beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. Thank you again for being on this. Really appreciate you guys. Much love. See you guys soon. Thank you, Wilson. Thank you, Wilson.